Hey there. Let's take a look at what type of images you'll need to build your customizer. In Kickflip, products are built with transparent PNG images. You should start from high-resolution photos of your product, and then you will need to cut out the different customizable areas with Photoshop or any other photo editing software. High-resolution images will enable you to see the details clearly as you carry out this process. If you are planning to apply colors dynamically on your product, a lightly colored product usually works best. You should try to avoid black or dark colors. You'll need one photo for each view you want to show. We recommend one to five views. Let's check out this shoe customizer. It has three customizable areas, the exterior, the insole, and the buckle. There's a fourth image that's not customizable, the sole. And this customizer has two views, a side view and a three-quarter view. Now let's take a look at the images we needed to create the customizer. As I explained, we started with a shoe photo and then used Photoshop to cut out the different areas. As you can see, these parts are white because we are applying color dynamically with Kickflip. Let's jump into Photoshop to show you how to create images like these. We'll use this sneaker as an example. I'll start by loading all of my photos in my Photoshop file. We'll open the first image and then we'll go the file, place embedded and select the second image. Now we need to make sure our images are aligned with each other. I'll reduce the opacity of this layer so that I can properly position it. As you can see, the side view is a little bit too big compared to the perspective view. Let's resize it. This should look better. Okay, now I will crop the image. The goal is to have a little space around the product, like that. I will now set the opacity back to 100%, and let's see what it looks like by hiding and displaying the top layer. Looks great. Let's now remove the background from our first image. You can use different tools in Photoshop to do this, but let's use the pen tool, which might take longer, but will give you a very accurate result. Let's open the Paths tab here, and let's create a new path. I will zoom in to see the details. Then I create my path all around the shoe using the pen tool. I aim to keep my path as close to the shoe's edge as possible. Sometimes I hit the Option key on my keyboard and click on the point to remove one of the pulleys. By doing that, I am able to shape the path the way I want it to be. Let's fast forward to the end of the path. I'll click on the first point to close the path. Now I'll right-click on the path here and hit Make Selection. The feather radius value should be zero and anti-aliased should be unchecked. Let's go to the Layers tab and copy-paste our selection. We now have a shoe without the background. We're now ready to cut out another area. Let's do this orange part here. I'll go back to the Path tab and create a new one. As you can see, I don't need to be precise here because I've already removed the background. Repeat this process for every area and for all your views. Once you are done, you should have a layer for each part of the shoe. From here, if we are planning to use dynamic coloring, we need to make our images look white. Let's do that real quick. I'll select the layer I want to modify, then I'll go to Image Adjustments and Desaturate. My image is now only grayscale, as you can see. The next step is to go to Image, Adjustments, and Levels. There are three pulleys here. The black one adds black to the image if I slide it towards the middle. The white one adds white if I go towards the middle. And the middle one adds black or white depending on the direction it is moved. This requires trial and error, but basically your goal is to make it as white as possible without losing quality. For this image, I would adjust it like that. When you repeat this process for your other layers, try to adjust the levels so that the whiteness is similar for all layers. Time to save our images. We need to save them in transparent PNG 24 format. All the images must have the same size because that's how they are aligned in Kickflip. The recommended image size is around 1200 by 1200 pixels and resolution should be 72 dpi. That's it for this video. If you feel like you need help to prepare your images, pretty much any graphic designer will know how to do this kind of work.
If you don't know anyone with these skills, take a look at our partners page. Or there are hundreds of graphic artists providing these kinds of services on freelancing platforms like Upwork or Fiverr. Thanks for watching.